So I, I, I'm, I'm, um, I usually do something, I usually like do all these songs and things that I write. Uh, so if you've come this evening to hear that, um, you're, that you will not hear those. Um, but, if you come, but if you come tomorrow night at the Sidewalk Cafe, uh, you'll hear those, and as well as uh, other people who are, who are performing tonight. If I fuck up that way, you know, my memory, you know, I'm grown old, you know, I'm just, you know, I have to read for the songs and stuff, but for everything else, you know, I, it's, so please forgive me, um, you know, so I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, okay, here we go. And the piano, if you look at it, it's very exciting. All right. So the first thing, the first first piece is um, this is sonata, the first movement of a sonata by Beethoven, um, sonata number sixteen for piano, as you might imagine. And um, this this was uh, Opus thirty one, number two, no number one. And uh, and this is like uh, this is kind of an uncharacteristic piece of Beethoven's. It uh, it's um, you might notice it has a little levity about it. And, and the cool thing is, if you think about it, like, you know, this was written about 1802, 3, 4, something like that. Or 2, 1802. And um, he, tried to, he, he was, like, going to kill himself for a while, and then he wrote all this stuff, because um, he decided he's going to take things in a different direction. But this, this piece is... Like, <laughs> so, so uh, but this one is, like, kind of, like, at the time, at the time, like, at the same time in Vienna, he was in Vienna, there was this guy, Rossini, you know, you ever heard about Rossini? Oh, yeah. He moved to Vienna, and he was like tearing everything up. Everybody's like, ooh, Rossini, Rossini, Rossini. He was, he was, he was this, you know, uh, real popular, he was real fat, and he like, and then he fell underneath his bed, and then he didn't, he just wrote another page instead of trying to get it. That's the story. Anyway, so he was real cool, and everybody thought he was cool, and Beethoven was like some little schmuck with like pock marks and stuff like that. And, um, and so he was, he was trying to like, in a way, he's like this piece is sort of parodying the operatic style of the time. The second movement is much more of a parody than this one is. But, all right, I won't stall any longer. Here we go. And this one's funny, kind of. <laughs> because it's like, it's like formally funny, which is a very interesting thing about classical period music, because classical period music, like Haydn, Mozart, Beethoven, all that shit, it's like, it's like, Everything about it has a musical quality, or a musical reason and sensibility, whereas romantic music has an extra musical sensibility, and so does Baroque. In fact, you could kind of think of it in terms of like it's going from extra musical sense or um, uh, connections and sensibilities to um, purely formal, you know, psh, 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 psh. and that's what Nietzsche thought. But yeah. okay, so here we go. All right, um, so yeah.
hear this. So this part. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, you're German? Like, uh, Did you understand it? Uh, no. <laughs> it sounded nice, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was spinning a lot. I figured that was a good Never mind. German. <laughs> <laughs> I understood you were on the lake. Oh, yeah, Vulcan. Vulcan spiel? Yeah. Vulcan, a cloud. Yeah, the spiel, my compadre. Alright, so the next one is about another.